All right, we haven't played that for a while, um, but welcome back to the Rambling Men Sports Podcast. Uh, Going to do sort of a half and half. It's sort of a regular show, but we're excluding a lot of topics because James could not be here uh, this week. He says he's going to try to be here next week, um, but we got my good buddy Stephen Copper back on the show. Uh, what's going on, buddy? Not much, Shanner. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. Uh Obviously, we got both our colleges on. Auburn baseball is about to come on, SEC tournament, actually, in our hometown of Hoover, Alabama. Uh, And then my Mountaineers will be on, I think it's around 9 o'clock in the Big 12 tournament. Uh, But, yeah. So, Stephen, you are our baseball expertise. So, how about you go ahead and – I said expertise. You are a baseball expert. Um, Why don't you go ahead and give us an update on what's going on ML, let's start in the MLB. Uh, starting to make, starting to show. What's going on? Right. I know the Red Sox and Yankees are off to a hot start. Red Sox and Yankees are the two best teams in the league. Um, and uh, they are going to be at each other's throats um, for the year, for the, all of this entire year, um, because of uh, your friend and mine, former Cardinal Joe Kelly, um, burying 102 in uh, in old boys back and starting a bench clear, so it'll be fun to watch the Yankees and the Red Sox for the next for the next six months. That is going to be a very entertaining division yeah. race for sure. Yeah, um, because the rest of that division is trash. Yeah. Um, Baltimore. The, do you, do you think it's possible that stop. both of those teams get over a hundred wins? Ooh. It's very possible. Because that's such a bad division. They could just beat up Baltimore, Tampa, and Toronto. They could beat up on everybody. They could get close. I see one of them getting there and one of them getting awfully, awfully close. Like, I know the, the Central, was it two, the NL Central two, three years ago, had three teams make the playoffs. And I think almost St. all of them had 100 wins, right? St. Louis and Pittsburgh and Chicago. St. Louis had like 101. That's Pittsburgh right. Had like 99, 98. Yeah. And Chicago had like 96. Yeah. I mean, they could be one of those situations minus a team. So, I mean, they could get there. Um, but, yeah, like you said, they, they can just beat up on, on the Rays, the Jays, and the O's. Yeah, yeah the but, O's are so bad. And I actually do really like Manny Machado. He's tearing it up for the most part. But he's there so day, bad. Every day that goes by that he is on the or Orioles roster is a major uh, front office catastrophe because they could get – Basically, whatever they wanted for a rental of Manny Machado. Yeah, do you think any chance he gets dealt? I mean, try to get something for him. Got to, he's, they've got to deal him. They're they're going into a full and total rebuild mode. They need pitching, probably worse than just about any team in the league. Um, yeah. And there is a plethora of young pitching um, ready to be taken by teams that need a bat. Um, so the, every day that he is not dealt is just blowing my mind. Um, yeah, that, that's one team. Really, I, like, I feel like they should be rebuilding, and they're not doing it. They haven't committed to it I yet. Know. Um, um, and so I know. Really, and I, I really like Machado. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he gets dealt just to a contender because I want to see him do well. Very underrated player. Uh, he's, he can play gold glove shortstop or gold glove third base. He'll hit. 35, 40 homers, drive in 110 runs. Hit about 300. 300, 310. I just, it, it, him toiling away on the Orioles for the next year or for the rest of this year just doesn't make any sense. When our one team that could desperately use him is a team that is perennially looking to buy rental talent. That's the Los Angeles Dodgers. They just lost Corey Seager a couple of weeks ago for the year with a rotator cuff uh, surgery. So they need a shortstop. Um, Justin Turner should be back soon. That actually um, that that fit makes a ton of sense after losing Seager. Uh, they got on. the talent. They got the young talent to get uh, to get them most likely. Um, I, I, that would be a good fit. They're in the NL, so it's not like they're going to be giving them up to a fellow conference rival. So it makes a ton of sense, just, or league rival, I should say. 
I don't get why he's still an Oriole. I mean, it, it, like I said, every day that it goes by is a front office catastrophe for for that team. They have I'm trying to get the name of the young kid that they have. That if they just even if they just traded him, Bueller, Walker Bueller maybe is their top pitching prospect. If they traded him one for one, because he's locked up for a while and on a rookie contract, I'm sure the Orioles would be even even with you know not a whole bunch of talent coming back, you know, yeah. in sheer numbers. Just I would guy. for sure. Obviously Machado, Adam Jones is still there. I think he's still a good player. Um, Chris Davis, could, you could probably get something for him. He's a good bat. Chris Davis, is pretty cool. still there, yeah. I mean, they've just, uh, Steve Pierce isn't there anymore, but they've got they've they've got pieces they can use to start a rebuild. Like yeah. you said, AJ is still there. Crush Davis can still mash the ball. Yeah, you Davis, know, you probably won't get a lot for Davis. I just still think he's a decent bat to have if you need a if you need someone. You know, an AL team needs a needs uh, Chris Davis can. Can can still do that. I just it doesn't make sense to me that the O's have um, have squandered what is now a quarter of a season without getting what they can for for Machado. And then that, like you said, with the we're talking way too much about the Orioles, but I want to throw this in there. Um, I, I always play this game in my head of when you hear a team, do you picture them as a pitching team or a hitting team? And for whatever reason, Baltimore, I feel like that's a team that should be loaded with pitchers. I don't know why. I see. I'm the opposite. You, you think like, you think hitting? I think hitting when I think Baltimore. Maybe it's because you know they have uh, in the past. You know Eddie Murray played for a long time for Baltimore. Coward P. Jr. Yeah. played for Baltimore for a long time. Uh, guys like I mean guys like AJ. Guys like Matt Weeders uh, played for them. Chris Davis played for them for a long time. So I don't. Know, I think hitters. Yeah, but I can see that. So the so the Central in the AL is a complete disaster. Um, there's one team. Who, who's above. leading that division? Is it uh, Cleveland? Cleveland's the division. They're a game above 500. Jeez. Uh, which is bonkers with the amount of talent that they have. Um, they just uh, it hadn't hadn't all clicked yet. I suppose they've got pitching. Steve or Clevenger is having an incredible year, a good year, a year, a up year for him. Corey Kluver is having a year. Corey Kluber-esque, Carlos Carrasco is having a good year. Trevor Bauer is having a good year. Uh, Garrett Bullpen is having a good year. Andrew Miller, Cody Allen, they're all having good years. They're just not hitting the ball all that well right now. Jose Ramirez, Michael Brantley. I feel like that happened with them last year, too, and then they got hot late and won, you know, the 22 games. They're they're built around their pitching. And, And sometimes that happens. In in the bigs with um, with teams that are built around pitching, they can't hit if they get you know if their pitcher's having an off day. It's gonna be tough to to win ball games if you're scoring one two runs one you know three runs a game. Mm-hmm. So, but not really it, a surprise. I think we all knew Cleveland was gonna end up winning that division. They'll bounce back. I'm a little surprised that Minnesota's not doing as as well as they should be. Um, Lance Lynn and Alex Cobb um, building uh, or uh, coming over to the to, to the Twins. They're not having a great year. They're not hitting the ball all that well, except for Joe Maurer. Uh, Brian Dozier's having an okay year. Um, you know, they're just they're kind of just there. And then that's another division that has teams that are just gonna that Cleveland's gonna be able to beat up on. They have the worst team in the league right now. In Chicago, which is a little bit surprising, yeah. but Chicago will bounce back, and Detroit and Kansas City will shuffle back. Detroit's they're, awful. <laughs> they're so bad. Detroit's third in the division right now. Oh, that'll change, but in front of Kansas City and Chicago. But like I said, I think Chicago is gonna is gonna shuffle. Kansas when, City's when they, a tad surprising. They still have a little bit from that World Series team. They just took two or three from the Cardinals in St. Louis. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it. Who knows? Alex Gordon is. Still Alex Gordon. They've got a couple of young guys. Whit Merrifield is one that... Moustakis that, uh, is still there, I think, right? This is still there. Salvador Perez is still there. They don't have any pitching whatsoever. Yeah. So they've got a they've got a pound team into oblivion. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, they'll be... 
they they will be where they're supposed to be at the end of the year at the bottom of the NL of the AL Central uh, with Detroit um, dragging Miggy's albatross of a contract with them. Um, you know, say lobby for Detroit, I suppose. But they're they've kind of started their rebuild. Uh, Detroit will probably select. Um, they have the first pick in the draft. They'll probably select Casey Mize, who's a pitcher at Auburn. Um, and and he could very well see time in September in Detroit. They need pitching that badly. Um, depending on how far Auburn makes it in the NCAA tournament, could kind of could could make make or break that. But but he is all but you know guaranteed to be the number one pick. He is pitching tonight, and there's I saw something on Twitter. There's like seventy or something or, or so MLB scouts there. Wow. Uh, I, I remember okay. when I worked in Nashville last year and I worked the <clears throat> um, Montgomery paper, he was always mentioned. They would always talk about Auburn baseball, and he was always mentioned and seemed like a really good player. He is incredibly from Springville, good old, good old country boy from Springville, Alabama. I've um, never even heard of that. <laughs> that's, that's up 59 from us, Shane. I, uh, I grew up in Alabama for 17 years. I've never heard of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're they'll they'll be where they're supposed to be, not in third in the division. Um, moving to the West, the West is kind of surprising. Yeah, uh, I want to get uh, your thoughts on Shohei Otani. He's he doing. Start. He is performing much higher than my expectations. Um, he's gotten. He's kind of beat up on teams, or not beat up on. He's he's carved up teams that aren't super good you know he's carved up on the rangers he's carved up on the a's he got beat around a little bit by boston one one uh, start went like two and a third that's when he had a little bit of a blister problem um so that happens he's mashing the ball on offense though so when he's when he's in he's hitting the, he's hitting the ball well um so it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up those two to keep up he's getting better on the on the pitching side he's He's figuring out how to be a major league pitcher um, and not just trying to overpower people with his, you know, he throws a hundred plus, but he's got a splitter. That's really nasty. He's got a slider that, that he can break off and, and, and fool a hitter with. Um, so, uh, but sitting right above them in the division is a team that I think is about to the bottom about to fall out. Uh, Seattle is a game and a half above. They're leading that division. I haven't even been paying attention. They're two and a half behind Houston. They're in second place. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're a game okay. and a half ahead of L.A., but Robinson Cano's out for 90 yeah. games, 80 games, because he's an idiot. I want to get uh, your take on that, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit, because um, I got some I got some fire for that one. D. Gordon just got hurt, so leadoff hitter and third three, four-hole hitter gone for a significant amount of time. Um, and I don't think Nelson Cruz can carry a lineup like he used to. Um, he's having a Nelson Cruz type year. He's in 270, 280s, 10, 12 home runs. I don't know exactly what he's at, but he's without those two to set the table in front of him, it's going to be tough for anything to happen. You know, Corey, Kyle Seager. I'm still surprised Corey. Seattle is that far up. I, mean, I was just looking. Felix Hernandez isn't having a very good year, and he's their ace. Felix is down, but they've gotten some really good starts from James Paxton. Through oh, no yeah, hitter. yeah. He, he just um, didn't know he's hitter. having a really good year. Uh, Iwakuma is having a good year-ish. Um, Marco Gonzalez, who they got from St. Louis, uh, is having an okay year uh, by a young kid standards. Mike Leake, who they also got from St. Louis, uh, is having an okay year. He's, he's a veteran. He'll get it. He's, he used to be so hitting. underrated. He used to be like the definition of underrated. Yeah, he he'll he'll be there. You know, they they know what they're getting from him. He'll he'll turn around and have a f- ERA somewhere between three five and four, maybe maybe four or five if um, you know things go south. But I mean, pacing the division not as far out as I thought they would be. But Houston is uh, Houston's pacing the division. I want to say. They only have the. They are the third best team in the American League right now uh, by winning percentage, uh, which is a little bit surprising. Um, but Justin Verlander is going to win the Cy Young. Uh, he, Look, is, he was my pick, and it's looking like it. Mowing folks down. Him and Garrett Cole are just tearing it up. 
Um, and they've got uh, – everybody's on that team is hitting. I'm trying to pull up their stats right now. But everybody on that team is hitting uh, Altuve, Correa, Springer, Alex Bregman, Marvin Gonzalez. They're all hitting. They're, everybody's, everybody's hitting. Everybody's pitching. It's just ridiculous. Um, I'm a little bit – the lowest batting average on that team is 250. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, of the qualifiers here, I'm looking right here, Marvin Gonzalez isn't hitting as – he's hitting 219. Okay. So, but above that, Bregman's hitting 270, Correa's hitting 270, Springer's hitting 295, Altuve 315. I mean, one, two, three, four. And Uriel Garcia, Uriel, Uri Guriel, or however you say his name, is uh, not a qualifier quite yet, but he's he's having a year like he usually does. They have three three qualified pitchers with qualified innings under a two ERA. Um, Verlander, Cole, Charlie Char- Morton. Morton. Yeah. Charlie Morton is having a Char- – a Keuchel has their highest ERA out of, out of their qualified starters, and it's a 3-4-3. Three, and that's their worst one. It's their worst ERA of their wow. starting rotation. If, if they get, if that holds, and I th- what's holding them back? Is it the bullpen? It must be. It must be the bullpen. I don't think Ken Giles is having a year, having as great a year as he as he did. Um, I'm trying to see. I mean, he's got a three three eight. He's got nine saves and nine opportunities. I don't know. Maybe they're not. Maybe, maybe they're, they're just not, not hitting the ball that well right now. I, I haven't watched a lot of their games. Um, I haven't seen them a lot, but something's going on. But it will. A lot of those averages you said, though, were pretty low for their standards. I mean, I think you said Altuve was hitting 315. That's pretty low for him. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's low. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so maybe they're just not hitting the ball as well as they have in the past. And when the bats heat up, maybe they'll just take off. They correct itself. And yeah. once it does, if the pitching holds, it's. It's going to be a – they're going to have smoke coming out from behind them. It's going to be oh, ridiculous. Um, the National League, moving over, is actually pretty surprising. Yeah, in all three especially in the East. The East is, uh, you know, around here, everybody's a Braves fan. And <laughs> the, Braves are, the Braves are leading the division. My, my be- Side note, my brother and my dad always talk about how fake Braves fans are because they'll oh. – they will be quiet when they're terrible, but then when they're good, all of a sudden, here they come out of the woodwork. Oh, out go the Braves, man. You know, they talk about from, like, the Carolinas to Louisiana is Braves country or whatever. Like, My brother just said the other day, MLB needs to expand and add a team in the South. Yeah, you need another team other than the Braves. Team, I, New Orleans would be a good market. I think Nashville uh, would be a great market. Nashville would be a good market. Memphis would probably be a pretty good market. They need to add another team, but Nashville listen. and Charlotte are the top two. I would try to add another topic for another day. Yeah, I that's suppose. another topic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Philly is uh, is Philadelphia is playing good ball right now. They're I getting, know, I know James some, would be happy about that. James would be happy. They're getting some really serious production from guys like Reese Hoskins and Odubel Herrera. Um, I it, I don't see either Atlanta or Philadelphia holding off Washington. Um, although, I mean, I Atlanta, um, they've yeah. got probably the three, they're at least the two top rookie of the year candidates and Ozzie Albies, who was a freaking revelation. I don't know what the heck I, he got I think that Philly will eventually trail off in Atlanta. I don't know why. I think Atlanta's the real deal. Now, maybe not the real deal, but I think they are a legit playoff team. I can't get a get a grip on Atlanta quite yet. I, they're good. Yeah. They're they're surprisingly good though, and and surprising is kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Um, surprising teams do, but I mean, if they keep it up, they're throwing the ball well. Sean Newcomb is throwing the ball well. Fulton Nevitz is throwing the ball well. Uh, Vizcaino at the end of the bullpen is throwing the ball well. They've they got, got Julio some- Tehran. You know, Tehran is throwing the ball well, although he is somehow always a trade candidate, so who, who knows what's going on there. Um, that, Atlanta has the pieces to keep it together. They're really young. Dansby Swanson's having a having a year that is above his uh, above his you know short career average. Freddie Freeman is keep, is holding serve with his average. I think Freddie Freeman's the NL MVP right now, um, really? just because um, he is the leader of that team. 
but I think I don't I don't know if if Washington can uh, can stay out of the playoffs with the amount of talent that they have. Max Scherzer. I think they'll get it together. They might squeak out and win the division, but I won't be shocked if Atlanta manages to hold on to it. I I don't know. I can't. Yeah, like I can't get a. I can't get a grip on the East quite yet. Yeah. I don't know why. It is. I don't know what it is. I know the I know the Marlins are going to suck. Yeah. I know the Mets are probably going to. Yeah, trail they're off. already starting to trail off. <laughs> they're already starting to trail off. So, um, you know. So I do. I do really like their manager. I do really like Mickey Calloway, though. Mickey Calloway, is, yeah, he's, he just sounds like he sounds like a ball. I was just ball, about to say that he ball, sounds like a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Mickey Calloway, great baseball name. Uh, if you didn't, if you, if I just said Mickey Calloway Hall of Fame, you'd be like, oh yeah, he's. In there somewhere. You probably already think he's in there. He was a Yankee at some point. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Central has got – so the surprise contender in the Central this year, I think, is Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see them contending like they are right now. Um, they are tied with the Cardinals for second in the division, three and a half back. Is Milwaukee win, first, winning that division? So the Brewers are on top of the division right now by three and a half. The Cubs are four back, and then the Reds have already lost the season. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, oh, Milwaukee, uh, they've gotten some really good production out of the guys that they needed it from. Yeah, good for yes. Milwaukee. That's a team I've always kind of liked. Uh, good for them for finally getting it together for the most part. I've I've never been a huge Milwaukee fan, obviously, but uh, just they're always just there. You forget they're always, they're yeah, they're always team. they're real pesky. Yeah, they're, they're a real pesky ball club. They're always. not his, They've his never team. been historically bad, but they've never really been that good. They've just been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, I've lots of takes on St. Louis. Yeah, um, Marcelo Zuna, Matt Carpenter, Dexter Fowler. If they don't start hitting the ball. Um, there are going to be plenty of holes in my drywall, um, and it uh, will be good for what carpenter or uh, or general contractor I hire to fix it. But um, we're pitching the ball real well, getting Carlos Martinez back from a little uh, I think it was a little little bit of a shoulder issue. It may have been like a lat issue. Um, he should be coming back in the next week or so. My NL Rookie of the Year pick, Jack Flaherty's throwing the ball really well right now. Luke Weaver's throwing the ball real well. Probably the ace of our staff right now. Miles Michaelis has been a revelation. Yeah, he, coming over from that's Japan. a name I've heard. He's been he's been an absolute revelation coming over from Japan. Um, it's not hitting the ball real well right now. Uh, we've got a couple guys case. that are hot. Tommy, Tommy Pham is hot. Uh, we've got a kid we just called up from the minors, Tyler O'Neill who's pretty hot. Other than that, we're just not hitting the ball well right now. So Cardinals need to need to get healthy. Starting shortstop is out for a pretty lengthy amount of time after breaking a bone in his hand. Paul DeYoung is out. We need to get healthy. We need to get uh, get some pitching, uh, kind of sure up, sure up our pitching rotation. And the bullpen is an utter disaster. We spent $11 million on Greg Holland, and uh, I don't believe he's attempted a save yet. And his ERA is something north of five, so Yikes. it is uh, bullpen is is an utter and complete disaster. Um, <laughs> the Cubs are just kind of hanging around; or they haven't really caught fire yet. Javi Baez is mashing the ball, but Bryant is not performing the way he normally does. Uh, Rizzo is not performing the way he normally does. Uh, Addison Russell's having a down year. The pitching is down a little bit after losing Ariette, after losing Lackey. New Darvish is okay. John Lester is John Lester. Uh, he's kind of been so-so against every team except for the Cardinals because he's a Cardinal master. And all he does is go seven innings, gives up a hit, or, you know, one run and three hits against us. That's a team I thought might – just their pitching might get off to a slow start because they brought in a lot of new faces. Yeah. Uh, but who Try knows? They might be able to piece it together. Is is you know at the end of the in the rotation there, so they'll they'll put it together. That I think all of these teams will put it together at some point. I think Milwaukee will keep it together. I think the Cardinals and the Cubs will put it together. 
like I said in our in our prediction show, I have all three of these teams in the playoffs uh, in some form or fashion. Did you pull the trigger on? I know you did on the Cardinals and Cubs. I don't. I think you did the Brewers too. I think you're right. Brewers. I uh, had I had all three of them in the playoffs. I had the Brewers and the Cubs in the wild card game. Um, so I, I if St. Louis gets healthy, if Chicago can can get a little bit more consistency from their superstars, uh, I think they can put it together. It's going to be a dogfight in the Central. I think I still think it's going to be a dogfight in the Central. I don't think Milwaukee's going to run away with it. I don't think if either the Cubs or the Cardinals put it together, I don't think they'll run away with it. It'll be something to watch. Um, moving on to the West. The West is another division that is woefully... Um, I know the Dodgers are off to a bad start. Is that cause for concern? I know they got a ton of injuries. They're hurt. They're real hurt. Um, but I, I, I think it's a cause for, I mean, I would say it's a cause for concern. You can't rely on Bellinger and Jock Peterson to kind of carry the team until I, I have such a problem with Jock Peterson. I don't know why. I think he's the most overrated player of all time. He, he's got an incredible pop, yeah. but it's two fifteen. Oh, I know. It, I just remember he was in that home run derby a few years ago. Everybody was like, oh, this dude's up and coming. He's going to be a superstar. And he's hit about two ten the rest of his career. Yeah. He's 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 a you know he's the poster child for boomer bust uh, and Bellinger to an extent is too. So I, I they need they need Justin Turner back desperately. Christian Taylor who plays center field for them is having a having a decent year. Um, I think Puig just got hurt. Maybe I maybe I'm making that up though. So they've they need to get healthy. Um, Kershaw's having a Kershaw year. They've got a couple of, and other I haven't pitchers. even heard of them because the Dodgers have kind of been non-existent. Just nobody's think, really talking about them. It's it's tough to hear about Kershaw yep. when when you're used to the Dodgers being 15 games up and they're five games under 500 right now. But Kershaw's still being Kershaw. I mean, you're not going to not get Kershaw numbers from him. So uh, at the top of that division, though, uh, the Rockies and the the Rockies are two games above 500 at, to lead the division by a half game over. The Diamondbacks. Yeah, the Diamondbacks, uh, so, I, I was mean, really they, cheering for them because I picked them to make the playoffs, and they got off to a really hot start, and then they've lost I don't know how many games in a row. I know they got seven, swept by the Mets, I think. They've lost seven in a row. Uh, one, nine of their last ten. Uh, they're not playing They're not playing good ball right now. Nope. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know a whole lot about them, obviously, out on the West Coast. I don't can't stay up that late, but uh, I mean – you have a pitching core like they do. I mean, Greenkey, Taiwan Walker, Robbie Ray, you know, Shelby Miller's coming back soon. Uh, you you got to think that they'll be able to turn it around. Um, A.J. Pollock and, and Goldschmidt are having – Didn't career. Pollock just get hurt? Yeah, he did. Again, having career – they were having career average type years. You know, Goldschmidt's going to Goldschmidt. He's going to do – he's going to do him. But I don't know who else they have on that team. Yeah. Uh, same with Colorado, you know, at the top they've got uh, Cargo and Nolan Arenado's having an Arenado type year. Um, probably Blackman, neck and neck. LeMayhew, all those guys. Yeah, all those guys. They're at the top. At the back end of the, of the lineup, I, I don't know if there's anything worthwhile happening at the back. I don't know if there's anything, much of anything worthwhile happening in the starting rotation. Yep. I know Wade Davis is having a pretty good year at the back of the bullpen, but the pitching in Colorado, you know, it, it, it's kind of always up or down. So I'd say the first quarter of the season and, you know, outside of a couple of no-hitters, one by Sean Manea in Oakland, one by James Paxton, there was a combined no-hitter by the Dodgers. There was a brawl between the Yankees and the Red Sox. I would say the first quarter of the season has been pretty – Underwhelming. I, I, you know, there's nobody that's really tearing the cover off the ball except for Mookie Betts yeah. and JD Martinez for the Red Sox are are destroying the ball. But they're yeah, I think Mookie good. Betts is the early AL MVP. I think that's pretty obvious uh, by a long, yeah. long way. Um, um, he's having a stupid year playing out of his mind right we'll now. We'll see what happens with that Yankees lineup. They got off to a little uh, bad start. Yeah, they're coming around. Yeah, I mean, they're coming around. You can't, keep, you can't keep that much talent 
down for long. Stanton's coming around. Judge is coming around. Glaber Torres is ripping the cover off the yeah, ball. Yeah, and he's there. Kid. He was their uh, top prospect, correct? That's, uh, yeah, it is. And he's mashing the ball at second base. Uh, Didi Gregorius is uh, pissing everybody off, hitting fourth in a lineup that he has no business hitting fourth in. Um, you know. It's just, like I said, it's just kind of been underwhelming. It, I, I feel like it's been underwhelming in that aspect, but for the most part, it's been pretty, i say, on par. The teams yeah, we thought were going to be good have been pretty good. It's, a, it's early. The teams that – there's some surprise contenders. Yep. Like I said, the Braves, the, the Pirates, you know, uh, I would classify the Angels as a quote-unquote surprise. I mean, Trout's having a Trout year. Pujols has got 3,000 hits now. That's pretty cool. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's. there's been moments. Um, I just, uh, you know, maybe it's because the Cardinals have been so up and down. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of a man about the season right now. I don't know. What about you? I, I, I haven't really been paying attention. The last few weeks have been tough. Uh, I know I kind of, once the season got started, I paid attention a little bit, and then – there was the draft, and then uh, the, I got caught up with all the Marvel movies. Then my grandmother got put in the hospital. Just it's kind of been bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Uh, have, so I've kind of lost track. Um, so it was good to have you on and get a taste <laughs> of what was going on. Well, update, yeah. Yeah, but I haven't really been paying attention. I get updates. I mean, I get updates about the Mets and the Reds, and it's just Mets and Reds lose. All right, tell me something new. <laughs> <laughs> go to the next day, yeah. Yeah, go to the next day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but Cincinnati, I, I don't know about you. They are 17-10, and 10, I think, since firing Brian Price. Yeah. So, I they, think they're starting to come – starting to – I shouldn't say piece it together, but come around, beat, okay. Um, to be somewhat uh, – I didn't expect be, him to do that well. Beat somewhat with, you know, at some points. They still got Joey Votto. Joey Votto is still going to Joey Votto. Um, the one, I'm, I'm, they're going to be bad. I'm hoping – that eventually they're going to eventually call up Nick Senzel. He's going to rip the cover off the ball. The problem is, where are you going to play him? I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got options. Eugenio Suarez is a decent third baseman. They they could put him at shortstop. I don't think he's good enough to play shortstop. Scooter Jeanette is hitting the ball really well, and then you're not going to replace Joey Votto. So I don't know where you're going to play him. That's tough. We, we've got some guys like that, too, that have been just really ripping the cover off the ball in, the, in Memphis, our AAA team, and, and – we're trying to find places to play them, and for whatever reason, they're all outfielders, and we have three guys in the outfield that feel like they need to play every day. So it's been – the Cardinals have been uh, have been having a little bit of that too, so I, I feel your pain. I believe the Reds are the only one to fire their manager so far, correct? Trying to – yeah, because, I mean, the Marlins aren't going to fire them because they're in uh, – yeah. I, I think – I think so. Padres haven't fired the Marlins – Rangers haven't. The White Sox. I don't think it's just the Reds. Yeah. Is any anyone? I don't know how closely you follow anyone that you think could be an interesting candidate for that manager role. I do have a name, but I'm curious to know what you what you think. Actually, I got two. Since since it's Cincinnati, I would say like Barry Larkin. That was one of them. I would think be one of the names. Uh, an interesting an interesting pick, and and teams have been have seemingly kind of gone to that a lot more recently. You know, with Aaron Boone uh, being a first-time manager in New York, Alex Cora being a first-time manager in Boston. Um, trying to think of some other ones. I, don't know, I can't. Mike Matheny was one yeah. uh, when he was hired. Um, so Barry Larkin would be interesting. Um, if you say Pete Rose, I'm going to kill you. No. Um, okay, good. Uh, no, the other one. The other one. They <laughs> actually they hired him a few weeks ago, and I think it's setting up for it. I'm really hoping it's setting up for it. At least they hired John Farrell, who was with Boston, as like a scout, and I sent it to my dad and my brother. I'm like, I really think this is setting up to fire Brian yep. Price, hire Farrell internally, and make him the new manager. He's had success. Yep. He had success in Toronto um, in his first stint, and obviously he won a World Series with Boston. Had him in, had him in the playoffs pretty much every year. Um, so that's an interesting move. Uh, I know, I know, he probably wants to get back in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I didn't. I think I actually did see that they had hired him for. This some was a few time. weeks ago. It probably just slid under the radar for everybody, but they hired him just as kind of like a scout because it was the Reds and. Yeah. 
it's just, <laughs> they're not playing well. But yeah, I mean that's that's it'd be big. He he has the ability to uh, to really right the ship in a clubhouse that needs it. He came in after was it Teddy Valentine in Boston? Uh, what was his name? It was Valentine. Bobby Valentine. Bobby Valentine. Teddy. Uh, Teddy. I don't know who Teddy is, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he was terrible in Boston, and then he came in that first year. thing in the in the dugout. John Farrell came in, righted that ship, got him to a World Series. They won a World Series. His uh, first year too. He's good. He's that'd be a good pickup. That's a good I think pickup so too. for Cincinnati if they pull the trigger to make him a manager. That'd be good. Um, but then, like that. last baseball topic, I think we're gonna do. We said we were gonna talk about earlier. Um, Robinson Cano. Hit with an 80-game yes. suspension for PEDs. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. So, <clears throat> I, I hate steroids in baseball. I, I I think it's cheating. You know, it's rules are there for a reason. Cano actually got popped for what is essentially a diuretic. Um, so he got popped for a drug that is meant to cover up. Um, another substance in your blood um, or in your urine. So obviously he was trying to hide something. Um, he, this surprised me you, the way that the collective bargaining agreement and everything is, is set up the players that are test positive for any banned substance have the ability to, um, Contest the rule and contest the test. They have a, they have the ability to, um, you know, appeal it basically. Appeal the suspension. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. He didn't do that. He chose not to. So that tells me that he probably didn't want them to run a couple more tests once that diuretics out of his system because there was something that he was hiding. Um, yeah, I, got, I actually got a comment here. My brother showed it to me, and we were going to use this for the show next week with James. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and talk about it here because I feel like it will be outdated next week. Yeah. Uh, let me find it. Um, it was actually, I think, Mark Teixeira, former teammate of his, said he mm-hmm. was not, end quote, not surprised about Cano's PED use. And one thing that's actually interesting, Cano's assistant was on the list for the biogenesis scandal okay. from a few years ago that took down Alec Rodriguez and Nelson Cruz. He was on the list. His his assistant was so maybe. Crew, uh, and I I read something or I heard something on a podcast or something came across something that I was ingesting that while Cano was on the Yankees, his two you know two best friends were A Rod and Melky Cabrera. Both of them. I know A Rod. I've never heard of Melky Cabrera using for uh, for PEDs. So. Okay. There was a lot of talk that people, like like you said, that people weren't really surprised that he he got popped because those they were best buds and they all worked out together, had the same trainers, all that, all that stuff, and and so that's not surprising. I my take is that I hate it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's I think steroids have always been bad for the game. I understand um, that they might have saved baseball in the late nineties. Um, doesn't mean it's not cheating. Doesn't mean that. McGuire, who was my favorite player growing up, <laughs> didn't cheat yep. for years. Didn't mean that Sammy Sosa didn't cheat. Rafael Palmero, Clemens, Bonds, you name it. <clears throat> that they broke the punishment that they're getting by not getting into the same. I agree completely. Um, same as Sosa, same as Shoeless Joe Jackson, same as anybody who breaks the rules of baseball. The rules of baseball mean something. Um, and... Uh, uh, and it's it's something you hate you hate to see it happen to, uh, or happen to a player of Cano's caliber. But that gets you thinking. You know, is he really that that? Uh, does he really have that type of talent, or is has he been? I, I didn't realize how good he was uh, until I saw his numbers. He's a career three hundred four hitter. He's got over two thousand hits, and I think over three hundred home runs. Uh, he was on pace to be in the Hall of Fame, and I think this really is going to hurt him. Yeah. Um, I think it essentially um, strikes him out of the Hall of Fame. Because, um, like I said, you, you got to think, was he taking a needle in the cheek every three or four days to get those type of numbers? 
Who knows? Yeah. Um, but now that now that he's been popped, there's there's really no debate in uh, in in his Hall of Fame status anymore. To me, you know, it, it's uh, cheaters gonna cheat. I don't feel bad for him at all. Um, you sit out eighty games, you deserve it. Yep. Take your punishment. Go on, on young man. I agree. Uh, hate to see it happen. I never, I never really disliked him. I always kind of liked him. I don't know why. Uh, Put on a hell of a show in those yeah. home run derbies he was in. His dad was thrown to him. That was a good story. He probably juiced up before that, but you know. that, and that's what I was wondering. I I had never really heard of him until he won that home run derby a few years ago and then I thought it was all like I didn't realize like I said how good of a career he was having I thought he was kind of just getting by maybe he juiced got into the home run derby that one time won it juiced a little bit more then all of a sudden he gets a big contract and his numbers haven't really been the same since this big contract maybe that was just leading up to it yeah I mean maybe he wanted to do it during a contract here but I was looking at his contract he's got five years left on his contract and now he gets busted yeah. like it Something's fishy about that. You know, I can almost see, you know, if you want to have a huge year, you start, you're in a contract year, you start maybe juicing in like January, February, go out, go through all, all throughout the year, have a, have a career year, get your payday. Not good, but, you know, I can kind of understand that. But he's in the middle of a 10 year contract where he's making two, some absurd number, $240 million guarantee fully guaranteed contract and it just doesn't like it, it in the fifth year of 10 like it just doesn't make sense to me yeah i'll so give you that that's that's where that that it sounds a little fishy so um like i said i don't feel bad for him at all yeah he deserves it um of course playing for the yankees for all the, all that long i didn't like him to begin with so uh moving so on me. moving on uh unless you got any other baseball notes you want to mention this is I taking up most of the podcast already. <laughs> uh, well, one story that I thought was funny. So Yadier Molina got hurt uh, this year. He took a ball off of the man region, uh, took a foul ball off the man region. And the Cardinals, three days later, received a pro bono sponsorship from a Kevlar company. <laughs> Kevlar companies are going to provide all of the Cardinals cups for the rest of the year. Uh, <laughs> that's a good that's a good so we've got the best we've got the best cups in the league <laughs> <laughs> gotta protect the, the man part gotta protect the McNuggets but moving on <laughs> I wanted to mention this um NFL top 100 I don't know how closely you follow the NFL Steven I know we're in a fantasy football league together as far as I know though you don't have a favorite NFL team I think it might be the Carolina Panthers just because of Cam Newton uh, yeah, I follow Auburn players in the in the NFL. Like like you said, I, if I had to pick a team, it'd probably be the Panthers, just because of Cam Newton and Cameron Artis Painter on that team. Uh, you know, I've I've followed the NFL closely enough to lose at fantasy football every year. Um, I had an no, awful year this no, you year. just won it a few years ago. I did. I won it a few years ago. That's true. But then I came in last this year. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, I take the good with the bad. But you know, I follow. I, I watch ESPN. I follow the NFL as closely as uh, you know. I, I'm not. I'm not you and 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 William following everything with you all. So, you know, obviously, y'all have teams that y'all follow. I just never had that. You know, um, I was always a baseball guy growing up. Yep. Auburn football, stuff like that. So but, I can't, I can't attest to that. We were on a Pee Wee team. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but so NFL Top 100, the first 50, I believe, have been released. I'm not sure about the uh, – Yeah. If there's like been it. another 10 released, I can't remember if I've missed that. Uh, but so top – or I'm sorry, not Top 50. The bottom 50 have been released. Um, anything, any of these surprise you? I sent you the list today. Anyone yeah. you think that's too um, high, too low? And now granted, this is based off last year. This is based off last year. I thought – uh, one that jumped out to me, Jimmy Graham um, was at 89. He hadn't done much since he left New Orleans. I know he just signed a deal with uh, the Packers, so I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about that. But uh, but Jimmy Graham seemed kind of high to me. Just maybe it was because of the system he was in in Seattle. Um, he actually what? had a decent year last year. Um, I, he, You're right, though. He has – 
really gone downhill since he left New Orleans. Some of that I think is age. Some of that is I don't think Seattle really knew how to use him. He didn't really fit the offense. So I think that definitely played a factor. And then I think finally last year they figured out how to use him. He had a better year. I think he might have had about 600 yards receiving, maybe around 10 touchdowns. He had a much better year, but it still wasn't New Orleans numbers. Um, Yeah, on that same kind of plane – Jimmy G is right behind him. Um, I can't believe not- Jimmy G is ranked above Kirk Cousins. That was the one that kind of got me. And Case oh Keenum. Case Keenum is 51. Now, granted, I know he did have a great year last year. Is he still with – yeah, he's still with Minnesota, right? No, he's in Denver. Denver, that's he's right. He's in Denver. Right. Uh, Kirk Cousins is in Minnesota. San Francisco yeah. has Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, that, that Keenum has always seemed kind of like a – Kind of like your your lovable backup in the NFL. He finally got his chance with Minnesota last year and played played well. He had some weapons around him that helped him out and and a defense that uh, that was pretty good. But yeah, that that kind of jumped out at me too. JJ Watt at eighty four. I think JJ Watt. Well, obviously he, he's a lot better, but he got hurt, so that, injury, that's going to bring uh, him down. That's gonna yeah. I mean, it's it's almost you know. It it he doesn't he doesn't belong there, but I can see where they put him there. Yeah. Um, in, in case Keenum is ranked in. above Philip Rivers, that is ridiculous. I can understand being ranked above Derek Carr. Derek Carr got hurt, but Philip yeah. Rivers didn't, and he had a good year. He's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, I don't get I don't get that at all. It feels yeah. like maybe just all uh, these guys that love Case Keenum just got together and voted him in. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Now, Odell Beckham at 77 kind of makes me laugh because of how much grief we give William. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who, by the way, had his baby this week. His Washington Capitals are in the Stanley Cup. Uh, good for William. He's having quite a week. He is child. having quite a week. Uh, Liam is a Liam is a looker for sure. Congratulations to William yep. and Olivia. And they're both doing well, which is great. They took him home today. Yep. Um, it's good to hear that. Um, but went to high school with both of them. Couldn't be more happy for them. Absolutely. Makes wanted to make sure we got that in there. Yep. We d- yep. Uh, Devontae Freeman is at seventy. Uh, that seems about right. Yeah. Stephon Diggs, I think, is a little low at sixty-five. I've always been high on Stephon Diggs for whatever reason. I always take him in my fantasy drafts. Um, I've always said if he had gone to West Virginia, he wouldn't have been a fifth-round pick. Yeah. It's, <laughs> he went to Maryland. It, he was toiling away at Maryland. He was – he was uh, it, Auburn was one of his schools he, he was looking at too, so yeah. I, I, I feel your pain there, Shaner. Um, hey, oh, boy. Just my, what else we got? Uh, no, you're good, brother. I'm just running. Uh, I keep at, 60, at 53. Uh, they may have used his age for that. Um that kind of fifty eight. Leonard Ford at fifty eight is a little low for me. I feel like that's too high. Really? I think he's going to be. He had I a rookie. Going... I mean, he was a rookie. He had an okay year, but wasn't he the offensive rookie of the year? Was he? I don't even remember. Uh, I think he was. I, I, was it... I, he but had a good he year. He was a thousand yard rusher. He had probably over ten touchdowns. <laughs> But he was really – I mean, I'm surprised he didn't get 1,000 yards. He was basically – the offense went through him. Yeah. So yeah. I just feel like 58 is a little too high. I don't know. To, to that point, the defensive rookie of the year, Marshawn Lattimore, is at 82. Exactly. So. That, that's I think that's kind of my point. <laughs> you think that's high too? I don't, I don't. No, I think that's fair. He's a really good player. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, while you were getting charged, I think Aqib Tlaib, they just used his age for his rank. Like I, I remember – Eddie Lacy, when he first entered the league, I believe he was like Leonard Fournette, had a good rookie year, rushed for about 1,100 yards, I think won Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I think he came in on this list in the 90s, so I don't know why Leonard Fournette's at 58. Maybe because he got to the almost to the, almost to the Super Bowl. Almost the Super Bowl, maybe. Well, Eddie Lacy did get fat after that, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, Does he get 54, I see? Yeah, that's yeah. fair, considering he, he missed six games did. last year. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, there's nothing I see that's atrocious. I think Fletcher Cox is pretty low, sixty nine. Ah, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he's a good ball player. Um, one guy, 
Mm. While we're on the subject of 69, one dude, play, left tackle for Green Bay, made the list, uh, David Bakhtiari. Where's number 69? He said his life goal now was to get up, what, what is that, 22 spots to number 69, and then he said my life would be complete. Nice. <laughs> It was a very, very Rob Gronkowski thing yeah. to say. Uh, <laughs> he I had like a it. petition when he he was gaining Twitter followers, and I think he was around sixty nine thousand, and he didn't want to get over that, so he had people saying Stop. unfollow Stop. me, Stop. keep follow me at sixty nine thousand, and he would retweet people that would say, you know, out of respect, I'm unfollowing, <laughs> you know, David Bakhtiari because I want to keep him at sixty nine thousand followers. <laughs> What a guy! Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it always it always kind of hurts me to see all these Alabama players in here. Uh, are there any Auburn players? Steve, I was just about Steve, to ask you. Landon Collins. Uh, I haven't seen an Auburn player yet. He probably won't until you see Cam. Um, He'll be top fifty, on probably. Uh, Brett Robinson might be on it. I doubt it. Who? Uh, uh, Gino Atkins, didn't he go to Auburn? He Maybe? did not. No. no. <laughs> I feel like he did. Maybe that's no. another Atkins. Uh, we had an Edens for a while. Um, Why don't I think Gino Atkins went to Auburn? Philip Rivers is from Athens, Alabama. Is that? Yeah, he's just right up the road. I think he went to Decatur High School. He did, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see an Auburn player. I do see a WVU player. Uh, Bruce Urban. Bruce. Number 85. Yeah. I, we probably won't have one on there until Cam, um, if I had to guess. There's got to be another good Auburn player in the NFL outside of Cam, right? No? Greg Robinson is... Greg Robinson's not that good. You're right. Not that... I mean, he was number two overall pick, but he's not great now. Um, but yeah, Cam will make this list. He'll be in the probably the 40s. Surely. Yeah. Hopefully. If we're shut out of the NFL rankings, it's probably probably not great for uh I for thought us. there were other good Auburn players, but maybe that I'm living in the past when there was like Takeo Spikes and other guys. Might, Brandon Jacobs and you know, that era. Yep. Uh, oh well. But so you. that's the first half of the NFL top one hundred. Not too ridiculous. Some guys we thought were maybe too high, too low. Yeah. Uh, but I, so now we're gonna move on to non-sports talk and you wanted to talk about tv shows more specifically the new girl final season i got to watch it uh, but i'm curious to hear your take so i'm watching it right now um uh, my, my girlfriend is completely caught up she kind of spoiled for me the uh the ending um told me it was terrible so i'm looking forward to that i didn't think it was terrible i mean it wasn't anything special if it's, I thought it was fine. It was fine. If it's how I met your mother level bad. No, 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 no. That was historically bad. That Seinfeld, you could probably say, are historically bad. But I think it's kind of like The Office. It's just kind of okay. Like, all right, I'm sad to see it leave. It's a happy but, ending, though. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, I, I'm curious to see where they're going with this season. Um, obviously, Nick and Jess are back together. CeCe and Schmidt have a kid. I just finished the birthday party episode. I'm curious was, to – what did you think about them just skipping three years in between seasons? I hated that. I don't like it. I mean, yeah. I, I would have liked to see the continuation of the story from where it ended. Um, but that's a trope that TV shows use sometimes. Um, that one show that I'm completely caught up right now, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., jumped 80 years into the future. Oh. Came back. The, the timeline is all screwed up in that. TV show. I, I keep thinking that they're gonna that they're gonna intertwine the TV show with the cinematic universe. Still hasn't happened yet. And so none that, of the Avengers or any of those guys have made an appearance on the show. The, didn't didn't Robin from How I Met Your Mother? What's your yeah, name? Coach, make an first, appearance. Agent Hill was on like a very early season. Had a had a couple episode run on a very early season. Uh, uh, Sam Jackson was on a couple episodes as Nick Fury, um, but the biggest, I guess, superhero that's been on a it, it has been Lady Sif, the lady from Thor. From Thor's she's friend. in the, it. She was she was in that for a couple episodes, but I know she's got her own show now. 
but they uh, Peggy Carter was on it for a while. She had her own show too. She had her own show. She's been in it in flashbacks and stuff. But Phil Coulson's been the. Um, I still don't know how that worked. He died in the first Avengers. Been uh, yeah. The, watch the show. I mean, it, in the first three minutes, it it explains why how he's back alive um, of the first episode. So, um, well, really, the first whole season is about how he's still alive. But my, I digress. I don't know. The, back to New Girl. I just I'm curious to see where the season is going. Obviously, I'm only a couple episodes in. Um, but like you said, I don't like that they kind of skipped ahead. Nick's a super successful author. Yep. Jess is now where I'm at right now, working for uh, Rich Man Russell. Um, I'm interested, and in, you know, knowing what's going uh, not knowing what's coming, but knowing the. Um, you can general- tell. I think you can tell early on it's going to be kind of underwhelming. That's the way I saw it. And I, I it, that always happens to me with with final seasons of shows. Uh, I was obviously super underwhelmed with the final season of How Much Your Mother. Uh, and I thought that was a great final season up until the last three or four episodes. Yeah. Uh, another show that I um, adore, I watch over and over again. I go to sleep to it pretty much every night. Uh, what Scrubs, show? Scrubs had a great final season, and then they got renewed for a season after what was supposed to be the finale and it was horrible. Um, so that made, that hurt me. The office obviously it was not underwhelming, but not, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it was, it was like, you were fine with it. It wasn't friends level renowned the final season. Like how they I hated, it. I hated the friends finale. I, I think, I think that's a, I think that happens with TV shows. You get so, you know, I think it's tough for a comedy, it, especially because there's yeah. really nowhere to go. It's a comedy. You kind of want everything to be a happy ending. It's different for a drama. Because a drama, yeah. you can end it kind of any way you want, I feel like. With, you know, the dramas I keep up with, 24 was one that, that, you, that he just, you know, Jack Bauer just kind of walked away. Um, after all the years of saving the world in 24 hours. Um, I've never watched 24. But that my dad always I, I, joked that he quit. Since the whole season is a day, he quit every day. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he quit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Back so it, it's what? I, now we're on 24. It's what? Seven seasons, so it takes place over a week? No, I mean, they skip no, time. I'm sorry, not a week. You're right. You're right. They skip time in between the seasons, but yeah, I mean, it's essentially a week in time. Um, in a way, that's somewhat clever. A whole the, show devoted the, to 24 the, hours. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, like different. It. it's different. It's different for sure. It's action packed. I mean, it's it's Jack Bauer saving. It's it's an, it's an American hero saving. Well, he's Canadian actually. Keep struggling this, but saving saving the world from terrorists and, and those damn terrorizers. And you know, <laughs> it's it's a little bit ridiculous, but it's you know it, it's fun to keep up with. But one Man, one t- ending. Now we're on the subject of endings to shows. <laughs> one ending I really didn't like was House. I. And I loved House. I loved House. I House. I I caught. I kept up with it. You know, grow as we were growing up when it was on. I remember you going to a Halloween party just as House. I did. I went to our senior Halloween dance dress yep. as House, um, which I thought was genius. You got out of the car. You didn't have your sport coat on yet. Then you put the sport coat on and you started walking on the cane. I'm like, oh my god, he's Greg House. That's genius. Didn't take a whole lot of work. Nope. Uh, you you glued a beard onto your face and and had a had a baby thing as as uh, Alan from The Hangover. I did. So you looked a bit ridiculous, but I threw a sport coat and jeans on and walked with a cane. So hey, I was popular at that party. It was good. We were good. Uh, we both we both did well. Um, yeah, I, I I I don't actually know the ending of House. I don't believe I ever saw it. Oh, you it. never saw it? Uh, it really wasn't that good. Yeah, I'll have to check it out because, like I said, I, I loved House growing up. But House was great. Those like first three seasons, with that original, with that original co- cast, and then once they all left them, it really wasn't as good. They started having a cycle, cycled like the I don't know the student, like the like the f- the thirteen Taub and Cutner years weren't terrible. It just wasn't that original cast. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I haven't really watched any new shows. Um, I've been rewatching <laughs> a lot of Veep. 
I, I know you like Veep. I probably don't I like it as much Veep. as me. Veep. Do you? Okay, well, I, I do love Veep. Veep. The, the, there's a newest season that I don't believe I've seen yet. but uh, It's not I'm, that good. Keep, I'm keeping up with that. I'm trying to catch up with that. I'm trying to catch up with Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley was all right. I know it, you were iffy about it. I know Williams just all up in. I um, I liked it, it when TJ Miller was on the show. Now that he left the show, it's not nearly as good. Yeah, I mean it's it seems to be happening with a lot of our. I'm just, I'm I'm really just biding time until Game of Thrones comes back. Let's be honest here. <laughs> I um, think we're all doing that. We're just kind of in this uh, zombie I, mode, I just kind of getting so, by. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, I'm watching we're, we're Westworld. I love Westworld. It's not nearly as good as Game of Thrones. I haven't got into Westworld yet. I keep trying to get into it, and I just I, go, go ahead and it. wait until this season's over. Then you can just you can watch two seasons. Just, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. I'm just, like I said, I'm, I need Game of Thrones bad, Shane. Oh, I know. Me too. I need I need the show to come back like the first day of 2019, or I need the Winds of Winter book to come need, out real soon. Book. Because I, I, cause I, I don't know, I know we talk a lot about this. I, I just read all the books. Yep, so, so I'm, up, I'm all caught up on books, um, which really expands my mind in the Game of Thrones universe. So I, it's, I'm, and this will it, be the first season. It's completely different than the, that, than the books, or than the show. Knowledge. Um, first season, I have all that knowledge. Um, so it'll be interesting to like, and my girlfriend did the same thing. So it'll be, and we watch it. Even though we live nine hours apart, we'll we'll FaceTime each other and watch it together, um, and and throw theories around and you know do do what Game of Thrones fans do. Oh, absolutely! Um, I mean, absolutely. That's all we do. It'll be it'll be interesting to to kind of have you know the background knowledge that, that not a whole lot of show watchers have. But yeah, I'm I'm that I'll I'll be that guy this season. I'm like, oh, as a book reader. Oh, know, uh, I I do that all the time, and I know it pisses uh, William off to no end. Oh yeah. I can't wait for it because, as you know, he's not going to read it now that he's got a kid. No, I, poor William. <laughs> got to deal with that yeah. with a yeah, really, newborn. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Yeah, same. Uh, but I think that'll conclude. We have pretty much done everything we wanted to do. Taking up about an hour. Uh, thank you for coming on again, Stephen. I think this is your third appearance. And you're tied for William for the most. Well. Maybe I'll have to come back on it around the All Star break. He's, William's he's too in, busy. Yeah, he's in permanent hiatus um, with 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 little Liam. So I did try to get him on the show get just a, to get a comfortable lead on him. I did try to get him on the show today just to talk about forty eight hours of fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that went over well with Olivia. <laughs> uh, I don't think William's going to make any appearances for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, this, uh, Awesome baseball update. Uh, we're just getting started. We're probably going to have you on for the All-Star break. Who knows? I'm going to post uh, power rankings probably next week. I'm still trying to get things sorted out with my blog. Right. Uh, but, yeah, looking forward to your thoughts on that. But thank you once again for coming on. We will be back next week. Um, James, I'll be back. He's going through a really busy time right now. Um, we're going to have more topics next week. This was just kind of baseball. I wanted to get the NFL Top 100 out of the way, Robinson Cano, all that stuff. Next week will be we're going to be talking Infinity War because we both finally saw it. Maybe Deadpool 2. I would talk about it with you, Stephen, but I actually talked to that with my friend last week. I feel uh, like we're going to be uh, killing it. I checked it out. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good discussion for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about it. We'll be back next week. Thanks for tuning in. Later, Thank Stephen. You. Yep. That later. <laughs>